Hello and welcome to Question Time. I'm Benga Ashiro. I'll take you back to something very important that happened about a year ago. In 2017, the Hydrocarbon Pollution Remediation Project, HYPREP, was set up for the restoration of Ogoni land and for the entire Niger Delta region. But over a year, the agony of neglect still lingers. That's talking about the neglect of the highly polluted sites, even as HYPREP intensifies work on impact assessment of the affected sites. What happens to the federal government's planned implementation of the $1 billion United report, with Shell committing $10 million to the project? Is there a commensurate impact on the cleanup exercise? How much has the federal government committed so far into the project? And when is the actual cleanup taking off? Channel's TV crew met with the project coordinator of High Prep. Mr. Dirkel Marvin, we had a discussion on the progress report on Ogoni land. Join us in this exclusive interview. High Prep is a project of the federal government of Nigeria responsible for the implementation of the United Nations report on Ogoni land, and which the government is, is committed to doing and has demonstrated that by setting up High Prep and giving us the resources the things required to carry out that project. It was as if, uh, before the cleanup, a lot of things that were supposed to have been done before the cleanup had not been done. So when Nigerians were expecting the cleanup proper, uh, what we were seeing was the setting up for the cleanup. Well, there they, they was a preparatory or a, or a period of preparation, and which is, is, is planning, I mean, a period of planning which is necessary and for every project. And that is one of the things we've been doing. Setting up of the office is including the physical office and all the things we need. Uh, one of the things that we just did. Um, but it's important, again, to know that remediation, what you call cleanup, is not an isolated activity. It is a series of activities that will then lead to cleanup. Just to be on the same page, if, if I get it right, mm. High Prep, that's the hydro pollution, hydrocarbon pollution remediation project, has three mandates. Uh, that's provision of jobs, uh, compensation for the host communities, and also the actual cleanup. So, how far have you gone using these key indices? Uh, let me uh, state clearly High Prep has um, the mandate to remediate impacted sites and restore livelihoods. These are the mandates of high prep. And actually, the mandate of high prep is embedded in the uh, UNEP report. And the UNEP report is very clear as to their recommendations. There are a set of recommendations for the government, set of recommendations for the community, set of recommendations for the IOCs. And these are the recommendations. Uh, one core recommendation, the key recommendation, was emergency measures, which has to do with provision of water and health, um, health impact study in the community. But it's important... So are, are, are you saying uh, there is adequate provision of water supply, portable water supply in Ogoni land? No, I'm saying that the process to ensure that that water uh, is provided is ongoing. It appears the whole process is a very sloppy process. In the process is a highly organized, structured process. It's a process that started with the reviewing of the Gazette, ensuring that the process is transparent, that the process is immune to manipulation, as well as uh, political transitions. This is the reason that the, the, the governments reviewed the Gazette and set up governing uh, structures for hybrid. The governing structures, again, are the Board of Trustees. Uh, they are responsible for, for uh, receiving the funds and managing the funds for the project. We'll, we'll come back to the yeah. uh, funding so, procedure. So I, I'm just emphasizing how structured the project is and how But going is. by the UNEP report, yeah. this project was supposed to be a five-year plan and you've gone almost three years, two years into this project now. So that means that by calculation, you ought to have completed 40% uh, of the, this project. The UNEP report is very clear as to the task ahead being a very important task, being a task that's going to take time. Um, the initial um, years for remediation and other years for re restoration, we're talking about about um, 25 to 30 years. That is what is there. 
But the actual remediation work is something that we could do within the first five years. That's projected. But what that means is from the point of execution, the project coordination office started in April last year. The report was submitted in 2011. It took the president, the current president, the current administration to revive that project that was already buried. And so I, I think we should appreciate the president. Do you think it was commitment. right to, and sincere of the federal government to flag up the cleanup because it was a loud occasion without a high prep office on ground? Well, the, the process, this is what I'm saying, there is, there is a planning phase for everything. What happened was the government made, it, made a commitment and stuck to the commitment, flagged up the project, started all the processes that would lead to it, inaugurated the governing council, inaugurated the board of trustees, set up the project coordination office. These were all follow-up activities to the, to the flag off. So if, without a flag off, then you will not have the institution, you will not have the machinery that will produce this subsequent thing. And today we have a project that is on. We provided very recently um, a medical outreach program in which about 20,000 people were attended patients. We carried about 400 surgeries. The records are there in the community. Are you we not fair enough of your mandate? Uh, would, no, would that not, not, not at all. Not at all. Remediation. An eventual Rem arbitrage. Not at all. Not at all. The, not at all. Remediation. Remediation is a highly technical process, and so you need to prepare the manpower, the people who will do that job. That's what this particular training does. The people we, we did initial demonstration projects across 16 sites in four, the four local governments. Now you, you you talked about two key interesting concepts now. You talked about remediation and restoration, and yet you've not even started any of the two. We have started. That's what I'm saying. That remediation, what do you call remediation? It's a process. There are activities you need to carry. It starts with assessment. That's what TNF did. Okay? We have to do the next thing, which is the scoping. We are already doing that. But as we, as part of what you, formed the UNEP report was the impact assessment report. No, 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 so now no, you are no, delving no, into no, another let, as, let, as let, impact let me, assessment no, no, report. Let, let me guide you there. Okay. It's a technical okay. thing. Assessment is verified. Was this place polluted or not? That was answered by UNEP. Yes, it's polluted. The process for doing that remediation is what we are now doing. So and what do we need to do? We go back as of today to know the extent the contamination boundaries of each of these sites, and then we use that to build a plan, what is called a remediation plan for implementation. But if I'm reading, because the, the, the whole situation in Ogoniland is a desperate policy that cries out for an emergency intervention. So if I'm reading the minds of an average Ogoni person now, is asking, what time are you going to start the actual cleanup? We have, we have a, a, a timeline uh, which we have, uh, we have given out because we are following the procurement uh, process and we are going to have the first set of contractors in the field by September, October this year. But before that point, there is so much activities we are currently doing, one of which is the scoping delineation. As I speak to you, our scientists are in the field doing work, accessing each of those sites determining, collecting samples that will be analyzed for us to know the exact technology and method to okay, use so in that. Okay, so how job. long would all this site analysis, soil testing and all that, how long are you going to, you, to carry out that? Because, I'll put it succinctly, when are you likely, to, when are you going to start the actual cleanup? When people will see the polluted sites being cleaned up? The, we, we, by the conclusion of the remediation process that will select the companies in September, in October, these companies will be mobilized and deployed to site. But I want to make this point very clear. You, okay, that, you mean uh, by I, September? Because the report I read, you said August. Uh, this is what I'm saying. September and August are okay, barely, yeah, I mean, we are not going to, okay, to okay. Are, it's, it's not okay. casting stone, okay, these things. Okay. Uh, but I want us to, to, to focus more on the process that will lead to a credible cleanup. Because the reason we even have high prep on all of this today is because we have never really gone through the professional route of carrying our remediation. 